Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now this is the third time that you've redesigned this thing, Arjun. Why do you keep doing that? Why do you have to redesign this thing over and over and over again? Well, for the first part, I wanted more space to show my head here. I wanted to make my head circle a little bit bigger, so I had to make it a little smaller to take up less space on the screen. And secondly, uh, I will redesign this thing as many times as I want until it works exactly and looks exactly the way that I want it to do. It's a problem that I have. <laughs> but don't get all scared. Don't get all fearful about the blah. Don't get all, all fearful about this. Because this is exactly the same thing as what you have seen before. It's nothing new. It is literally exactly the same thing. It's just that things are in a little bit different places. And, of course, I've made it fit a lot better. It's like Tetris. You can take something and make it fit a lot better. And I also made it, again, top to bottom. Because it's going to work out a lot better for what we're going to do. Now, you could probably guess that this is not all there is to it, right? You could probably guess that at some point in the future, we are going to fill out the rest of this page. We're going to be doing something very soon that's going to occupy some of this space here. We already have one account here, and that's just because I I had this kind of lying around. Um, so, you know, for now, this brokerage account is just kind of floating out there. Um, I severed the connection that I had there because, so these are the changes that I've made here, right? I've severed the changes, blah, I've severed the connection from the brokerage account to the staging account because technically it's connected, but technically it's not because there's no money flowing into it or out of it right now. Okay, um, I, I took away all the reimbursement lines like these purple lines here, right? I just made, I just put it there, right? Because it's just, basically that's what's happening. The reimbursement account is being tracked that way as we see in the budget, right? That's where it is. Reimbursable expenses are going to all be tracked by this account. So it doesn't make sense to have a whole bunch of lines there. What else? My main source of income is job, and then I have other and MISC. So I combined all the other stuff like offer up others, right? I was opening some other accounts like I was checking out Poshmark, um, sell some stuff on eBay, and you know, misc like I sold my my queen bed frame and got paid in cash. Like that's why I was representing this here. But I just combined it all other to MISC and it's all going into staging. Like, of course, it's going to go sometimes to cash or PayPal or Venmo, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference. All right. All right. So that's basically the changes and the simplifications that I've, simplifications that I've made. It fits a lot nicely. It fits a lot more nicely into a confined space and I can still see what is going on here. And we have all this free space here for activities. And while it's blank, I don't know why I'm not taking advantage of this real estate over here. Okay. So that's what's going on there. It also gives you a little bit of a taste of what's upcoming. But in this video, we have about, it's June 15th now, we have half a month's worth of expenses to go and categorize. So for the rest of this video, that's what we're going to be doing. We're just going to go into my tracker. You know, it's technically a budget software, but I'm using it as a tracking software. So we're going to go in, or in there and just categorize all the transactions that I have. So I just want to mention this because... You might have this as a question. I'll go over a little bit, maybe some of the UI, but I'm not really going to concern myself too much with it because you might have chosen to use a different tool here. 
And as you're going to notice, I'm going to want to do as little with this tool as possible and keep it as simple as possible. I basically, I want to use this tool, use the budget, any tool that I'm going to be using, I want to use it to, for a specific purpose. Like I want to output, right? Kind of like what we did with this. Uh, we didn't actually, oh, we did make one for it, right? This is the software, and this is what I want from it. That's it. I want to be able to answer these three questions. And if I can answer these three questions using that software, then that software is successful to me. I consider it a success. Safety. I want to pull as much as I can into here. And you're going to notice that we're going to be starting from this position for almost everything that we're going to do. <clears throat> Like, I want this to be my central control center, and I'll map it out here, and then I'll go and make that thing happen, whether it's opening a new account, closing an account, changing a flow, canceling an expense, canceling something. It's I, I want to reflect it here before I actually go and do it. I don't want to put, I don't want to make this tool or any tool that I'm using like so much a central component that like I'm relying on this thing. Like a lot of people, you can watch other videos where people go in budget and they'll literally list out all the subscriptions they have in the budget. Kind of like what I'm doing here. They would make a list, you know, they would list uh, coach connections. You know, they, they, they would have subscriptions as a category group, like I have everything else here. And then under subscriptions, they would put coach connections. Whoops, I'm not going to click. They would put their health share. They would put this. They would put their insurance. They put their fast track. They put YNAB. They put LastPass. And then they have a, just a big list of subscriptions. I don't want that. That's way more complicated than it needs to be. And what if I want to cancel a subscription? Then I have a whole entire category. <laughs> Of course, I know that I can just hide it, but I don't want to hide anything here. I want this to be robust. And I want it to be simple. So that's why I'm not using this as a budget yet. We might. I might use it as a budget in the future. But for right now, all I want to do is track how much I'm spending. And this is giving me exactly that. And I'm also tracking how much I'm paying into my credit cards. And this is giving me exactly that. Okay? So let's go in here account by account. Actually, let's do a real quick overview of the of the GUI here for those of you who are actually using YNAB. So we're in the budget. This is the month selector. We're on June 2020. We can enter a note here if we wanted to. I used to use this feature, put a note like end of month note, how I did, thoughts, learnings, this and that kind of thing. This is what I have available to be budgeted. Okay. That means this number means that at the beginning of the month of June, I had $8,006.52 available to me to budget. Right, so let's just say that I budgeted eight thousand dollars here for rent, then that number would go down, and that would tell me that I only have six dollars and fifty two cents available for the rest of the month. It's a very useful tool if you need to you know get a handle on your expenses and you need to change your habits because you would literally go down this list right and put all your budgets, the amounts that you basically want to aim for for the month, and then, you know, let's say I just continue on. At the end of the month, you go to the next month, then you know that, or, well, this is how much you have left over. You want to get it to zero, ideally, but next month you start off, then you know exactly how much money you have for that month. But for me, right now, I'm not trying to get my 
like I'm not trying to change my spending habits because those, they're already like set. They're already pretty well defined. So it's not an exercise I need to do. But if you feel like you need to do that, then you should do that by all means. Like if this number is negative right now, you're using the same thing and this number is negative, then you got, then that's something that you need to get under control, right? Um, but it's also, I mean, this is something that I'm also going to see in a little bit when I make an income statement. We're going to do that later on. Seven days. You might be wondering what this age of money here means. What does it mean, seven days? This is the average age, or rather the amount of time that a dollar, when it comes into my hands, stays in my hands. So right now it's seven days. So if I get a dollar today, that means that that dollar is going to leave my hands in seven days. Now this number should go up over time. Ideally, you want it to be about 30 days because then you have 30 days worth of buffer, right? Like if you're spending every single, like if you're spending more than you're making, this number is going to be zero. If it's 30 days, it's it's like essentially equivalent to having a one-month emergency fund. If it's 60 days, it's essentially equivalent to having a 60-day, a two-month emergency fund. All right? Okay, so this number is the total amount that I budgeted. It's just a sum of this category, sum of this column. This is the total activity. It's a sum of this column. This is total available. The available column is this column plus this column. That's how you get the available column, and then they just sum up the total available. It's exactly the same as total activity, but let's say that I budget the amount for my rent. Total activity stays the same, but total available goes up a little bit. Total inflows, this is the amount of money that has come into my um, come into my budget or my tracking realm. But since this is also the first month that we budget, this also includes the starting balances. So when we added the staging account, for example, it had 5000 in it. This is now included in the inflow. So I didn't actually make this much money this month. This is just how much I started with. You know, next month is going to be a more accurate indicator of how much I actually brought in from my own earned income. All right, and then we have some buttons here for quick budget. We can set the, uh, the budget amounts to, you know, quick stuff, whatever I could set available amounts to zero. Um, you know, just kind of a quick options. We got some reports. We're going to be using them more in detail later. So this is kind of like an income statement that we have here. There's also some nice spending reports like a donut here. You can see how much you spent. You can drill down into things like, let's see, for necessary important, this month has been $14.14, 77.7% 7 of total. Wow, that's a nice number. That's a nice percentage. That's so cool. So we can drill down into it. We can drill down more into it. Rent has been 77.8% <laughs> of this amount. That's cool. That's amazing. You know, so on and so forth. Right? And then you click on that thing and you can see the actual amount. It's pretty cool. You know, it's actually kind of cool. You can really dig deep. You can drill down as they like to say when showing when showing um what's it called demos this is a net worth tracker it's not very useful right now because well we only have you know literally one month's worth of data here we only have june not even we have june yet but we can see how much debts there are we can see how much assets there are and you can see the net worth okay all right all accounts this is what we're going to be doing here in just a second. But I like to do it account by account because it just makes it easier to manage. So I'm going to go into the staging account and then just start categorizing, 
transactions. I haven't done any categorization except for some reimbursable stuff because as things came in for work, I just went in and made the transfers to the reimbursables. That's the only thing that I've, I've done. In terms of personal expenses, I haven't done any categorization. So, the first one here, this is actually a transfer. It's a payment to a Bank of America visa. Okay, so it's probably here. So I'm going to go into the visa account, try and find it, all right, and then select payment from staging, and then approve it. And if I go back to the staging account, I should see that this has been linked, right? You can see that it's the same amount, 143.98. And it's an inflow here of 143.98. Okay, so once that's been linked, I can approve this transaction here. This is also a payment, so I'm going to go into the account here that I think it's with and approve. Well, rather, I'm going to change it from a payment from staging, approve it, and then go back here and approve this transaction and that's how I deal with payments because sometimes this thing gets it wrong it tries to guess right why not tries to guess but sometimes it gets it wrong like I have two Bank of America accounts and I have two Chase credit card accounts and you know multiple multiple accounts from the same bank so sometimes it guesses wrong and then I have to go and correct a bunch of stuff so discover e-payment. See, this is the payment that we made in one of the last videos, an outflow of $542.31. This paid off the Discover credit card, and here is that transaction. So it's a payment from staging, and we're going to approve it. And we also use some of the cash back, right? We use some of the cash back to pay for this transaction. Now how are we gonna how are we gonna categorize this cashback? We'll get to that in just a second. Go go back to staging, approve that. And I'm doing this the long way just so that you can see, you know, follow along step by step exactly what I'm doing. But usually what I'll do is I'll go through all the credit cards first and then come and just massively approve all the link transaction. So let's go to the so this is a Chase credit card auto pay of 270, so I think it's this one. There it is. Payment from staging, approve it. And then there's another one I believe. Probably Chase Freedom, all right. Payment from staging, approve it. Go back to the staging account. All right, it's lagging. There we go. And now we're going to approve these two. All right, let's go to this one here. So it looks like a couple of days ago I went to In-N-Out Burger. So this is a category of dining out. What did I get? See, this is like Financial Mirror again. Raving uh, three by three and was driving by and in and out. <laughs> I like to use the memos for just that kind of thing. It's not like I'm ever going to really read it again. But, you know, I like using the memos. Here's something that I bought. Part to fix car will it work no idea that's how I feel about that all right let's go into this card so here we have uh, storage so this is a subscription 
This is the platform fee um, from WFG, and that's also a subscription. This is another part of the platform fee, which is also a subscription. Um, so that's it for that card. Pretty straightforward. Now this card, we have interest, purchase interest charge. So this category is credit card interest approved. Okay, and it's fifteen dollars eighty-three cents in purchase time. This is how much. This is how much in time I've bought with this card. Let's go to the Chase one. Oof, that's a big balance, huh? This is purchase interest, one hundred sixty-six point twenty-six. So this is also credit card interest approved. Um, because of coronavirus, my insurance gave me a little bit of a discount on this month's insurance because of the whole shelter in place thing. So that's nice. We're going to categorize this as car, right? Because even though it's a credit, it's still something to do with car. And it is not really, it's not really a, it's getting the money back that I paid for insurance at some point. So just real quick, I'm going to go to the budget and show you what happened with car. So before, you know, if you go back in the video, it had like negative 40 or something before. That's the amount that it was. But now that I have a credit applied there, the activity has gone up to reflect that. Okay, so let's continue onwards and go to Chase Freedom. I have a one transaction to import here, actually, so I don't know why I didn't import it when I logged in, but I'm going to click the Import button, and it imported this um, transaction here. And this payee, it recognizes this payee. Somewhere else, I've categorized this payee as groceries. So it did it on its own, so that's pretty cool. Now let's see if I can remember what I what I bought. Oh yeah, I did. I bought some fruits. I bought strawberries, blueberries, bananas. Because I got a blender recently. Oh yeah, um, I forgot to mention that. I have been also tracking the cash. transactions that I've been doing because I've just been doing them on the go, right? So I actually got a Nutribullet from this guy on uh, OfferUp um, for $40. So when I made that transaction, I just did it. And I also bought Gordo's one day. So I went and categorized that uh, on the go. Because otherwise I would have forgotten, you know, how much, you know, what I did with my cash transactions. All right. So let's go onwards. Uh, gas. This is actually, this is actually a work expense because I went and filled up the car the other day. Um So I'm just going to set that as a transfer to reimbursable expenses. And I believe this is as well. Because I don't remember going to the hardware store to buy anything on my own time. This is also a transfer to reimbursable expenses. I can tell you that. Or something. I don't remember what the name is, but whatever. Um, so this is the card that I've been trying to use for pretty much every work expense, just to make it easier to remember. But I guess I went and bought groceries with it uh, by accident or something. The last one here, Google Domains. This is a subscription. So I'm going to approve that. And remember last time, 
right? When we paid off this card in full, we changed the auto pay to be, where is it? To just pay the statement balance. So now we basically don't have to worry about this card. It's just going to be like every other card there, right? Okay, so now how do we deal with cash back? It took me a really long time to figure out how the heck to deal with cash back on my budget. Because on one hand, it is, an in, it is an inflow into your system, right? Overall, you're getting cash back from a credit card or a bank or something like that. It is money that you're getting from them, but it's not income. It's not taxable income. So, I mean, one of the options that we have here in assigning a category is we can call it an inflow to be budgeted which technically it is, right? It's increasing the amount of money that we have available to us that we can use for budgeting purposes. But if we do that, the reason that I don't want to do that is because when we go into the reports, let's just let's just say, let's make it inflow to be budgeted, right? Then we go into the reports, then cash back appears here. And I don't want it to appear there because it's not income. It's not really income, is it? So, we're not going to make it inflow to be budgeted. We're going to make it something else. And it's not an expense either, so it doesn't make sense to categorize it as any one of these things. But we still got to keep track of it, right? We can't just delete it, because if we delete it, then that's going to throw this number off. Now, what we could do what we could do, and this is kind of like a really weird workaround, but it might just work. We could call it a payment from staging and then go into staging and adjust the amount that we paid, um, you know, subtract 42 cents from this so that this number the balance in the staging account accurate, you know, is accurate. But that's not that good either. I don't like that because it's not it's not really reflecting what's really going on here. Because we did actually pay this amount from the staging account. So if later on I go and look like look for this particular number, I'm not going to find it. So that's not going to work either. I don't like either of those methods. So what we're going to do, because I mean the last point is that this cash back is a cash flow. It is cash that has flowed into our system, right? So the way that we're going to handle this is we're going to create a new budget category. We're going to create a new category group, and we can call it something like um, not really, not expenses or income, or we can call it something like do not track, or we can call it something like cash flow, flow tracking. It's pretty irrelevant what do we call it. You know, let's put it, you know, let's put it down here or something, or put it even below there because we don't really want to see it. It doesn't really matter what we call it. We don't even have to specify that it's cash back. We can call it not income uh, or cash inflows. Let's you know, let's call it cash back for now. But I mean, as you can probably tell, I want to keep it as general as possible. So let's go in here and say that it's cash flow tracking and save it as that. And let's put the memo that it's cash back. Now if we go into the reports, it doesn't show up as an in income, and that's good. We don't want it to. However, it does show up down here as cash flow tracking. And you know it's going to adjust the total amount of expenses that we have. So now this number is offset by that, which is not 
technically correct, right? So what we're going to do is just uninclude it from the income or from the, you know, the categories that this report is made off of. And now what we have, what we were just looking at. So now this is this is an actually the income sources. This is actually the list of income, and this is actually all the expenses that we have, and it's not offset by cash flow. That's not an income or expense. So that's how we're going to deal with cash back. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the budget a little bit before we end it here. And uh, this video is a lot longer than five minutes. Um, but as we can see, right, because we don't have anything budgeted here, we have activity which reflects the actual amount that we have spent in each of these categories and the available amount. Like you'll notice here that some of these numbers are red and some of these numbers are yellow. Okay, now YNAB is, is pretty awesome for this reason. These differences are going to allow us to, to, to see how much has actually left our accounts versus how much we've spent on credit. This yellow category here signifies that we've spent all of this $28.93 on credit. And if you recall, that was one of our requirements for the budget. Uh... Where was it? Yeah, we wanted to see actual cash flows. Remember, if I buy something for $100, if I buy something for $100, you know, an expense is $100, and I pay using a credit card $100, then I only pay the minimum amount towards that credit card, $25, then my cash flow for that month is an increase in cash of $75. Does that make sense? I spent $100, but it's as if I was given $100. Like the credit card company gave me $100, and I only spent 25 of it but I bought the entire thing. So I have $75. I can go and use that $75 for other things. Like I can buy four times as much TV as I bought and pay each one of those $25. But you know now I have payments over time. But that's essentially what's happening. And that's the difference. We're going to see this. this is, that's the difference between actual expenses and cash outflows. And as you probably notice, when you have more expenses than you do cash outflows, then you have a problem. Or if you don't have a problem right now, you're going to have one very soon. So YNAB is really, really good with this. It's going to allow us to see how much we've spent, actually spent, and how much, whether that money is actually left or we've just incurred a debt. It's going to tell us our increase or decrease in the amount of debt that we're holding. So if we click on a category, it breaks it down for us. Rent. Cash left over from May, zero dollar, of course, because we started in June. Budgeted this month, zero dollars, didn't budget anything. Cash spending, 1100 and credit spending is zero dollars. That's great. Let's try and find one where there's some cash spending. Uh, insurance, okay. All right, both of these are zero, but cash spending is 33.57. Okay, and that's because this spending, right, let's take a look here. This spending has come from the staging account. So if we go back here, it is represented by this line. So it went directly from the staging account into my expenses. This spending, however, for the health share of $224, it went to a credit card. I used the credit card to pay the expense here. And I have not yet, this 
movement of money from the staging into the credit card that paid that has not yet happened. That's what that's saying. So let's say, for example, here we just budget thirty-three fifty-four, then this bubble changes from red to yellow because this is the amount of debt that we have created. This is the amount of extra cash that I have available now because I haven't made this payment. All right. So once we get towards the end of the month, we're going to look at this a little bit better. Okay. And one thing that I forgot to do and I realized that I now want to do here is add a little bit more data to this. So I'm not going to do it when you guys are watching, right? Because it's just going to take up more time. But I'm going to add I'm going to add the amount um, for each of these reoccurring expenses here, and then whether it's yearly or monthly, right? So that's about it. That's all I'm going to do. That's it for today. We've categorized the expenses, and we did something else in the beginning. We reviewed this, I think. I think that's all that we did. Um, so, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. I'll see you guys next time. And it's probably going to be towards the end of the month, at least in this series. I might start the other series um, kind of soon, Section 3 here, uh, which is going to be all about paying down the debt and eliminating the debt and uh, basically automating it. And that's going to serve as a pretty cool foundation for when we're going to start saving and investing and making money go automatically into other places. So this real estate for, you know, where I can have my head is not going to be around for very long. <laughs> we're going to be filling up this side of the screen in what's going to seem like no time at all. So looking forward to it, guys. Peace.